Okay, today's video is going to be about the complex task of getting a robot to drive in a straight line. Although it sounds a simple task, it's actually quite difficult to do. Um, this video will rely on you've seen my previous three videos. First of all, how a H-bridge works, how it can switch a motor on and off and make it run forwards or backwards, how to control the speed of a motor using PMW, and also how to read rotary encoders to know how fast the motor's turning. All right, this is the robot I'm using, very simple. Two motors, both with rotary encoders on it. I'm using a little ESP8266 dev board. Um, that's just going to make it easy for me to run everything via Wi-Fi instead of having to connect it to my computer to do everything. I have a tiny little H-bridge there. H-bridge just there to be able to switch the motors on and off, forwards and backwards. I have a little um, RC LiPo battery to run it all with a little buck converter to stand, step down the power to be able to run the, the, the dev board. Now, the first task, what we're going to do is we're just going to switch the motors on, both turning in the same direction, and I'm going to send them both the same PMW signal to get them to go at the same speed. But what you'll find is although I'm sending them both exactly the same PMW, i.e. the exact amount, same amount of power, you'll find that the two motors won't spin at exactly the same speed. And this always happens that no matter which two motors you use, they'll never be identically perfectly the same. And although you send them both the same amount of power, you'll always find that one is going to turn a little bit quicker than the other. Right, so my program I have here is fairly simple. The top part up, up the very top here, just simply imports the pins. I just simply set up the four pins I need um, for a frequency of 40 hertz and the duty cycle set to full on. That's because that H-bridge is backwards. When I set it to high, it turns the H-bridge off. When I pull it to ground, it turns on. So everything's a little bit backwards. Um, this here is just simply my motor power class. I'm going to pass it the left, the power for the left and the power for the right. It first just checks to make sure everything's within the correct range. From um, If it's larger than 123, then it makes it equal to 123 if it's smaller than things. And it does it for both the left and the right. Then it just simply um, sets the PMW for both of them. If the power is equal to zero, then it sets it both to 1023, which is both motors turned off. If it's larger than zero, it turns the forward one on, and um, the sorry, the back one off, and the forward one on by the needed power. Else, it will turn the um, forward one off and the left one on by the the reverse one by the needed power, and it does the same for the right. And that's it. That's the whole. That's that whole routine there. I do have off the bottom a little stop routine that basically just turns all the four pins off. But pretty simple. Basically, I just pass that routine the amount of power I want, and it just sets the correct duty cycle. So if I come across to my program, slip into my shell, and I simply here and I run my program now. I've set them both to go quite slow so the robot doesn't race off. And what you notice is the robot's actually going in a curve. Okay, the reason we, our robot, went in a curve is because we were using open loop. We just gave it a set power and never checked to see if it was actually turning in that power. Like I said, because some of the motors will be more efficient than the other motor means they won't turn at exactly the, the same speed. So what we're going to do is we're now going to build a closed loop where we set the speed, then we read the encoders to work out what the speed is, and if the speed is incorrect, we'll either increase the PMW power or decrease the PMW power. So this is my program. Basically, I'm just setting up the pins to read my encoder, um, set some initialization values. I come down here to my main loop from the wild true. There's my main loop there from the wild true. So the first thing I do, you'll recognize that from my previous video of, of reading the encoders. I just read the encoders and then I work out how much time has elapsed. If more than 99 milliseconds, i.e. one-tenth of a second, uh, 0.1 of a second has elapsed, then I'll run this. If it hasn't elapsed, then I'll just go around again. So what it'll do is it'll read the encoders, update the counter, read the encoders, update the counter, it'll go round and round and round and round till one-tenth of a second has passed. At one-tenth of a second, what it's going to do is it's going to work out what speed it was doing for that one-tenth of a second. So left delta speed is equal to what the counter currently is, 
minus what it was last time around and then multiply it by 10 because obviously it goes around, um, you know, it, it happens one tenth of a second and that will give you what speed it's doing per second. Right, then I reset the current. And down here's my PID controller. Basically, it works out what the error is. So my left error is the speed I'm after minus the speed I'm actually doing. And that will tell me what the error is. And then based upon that error, I'll work out what the new power needs to be. I do the same for the right, and then I update the power setting to the motor. And then it goes back up the top of the loop and goes round and round again, reading the encoders, waits one tenth of a second, checks the speed. If the speed's incorrect, then it works out what it needs to do to the uh, power of the motor and updates again. All right, so let's go. And here he's in action. I can line him up with the, try to go straight in line with the floorboards. Takes a bit to settle down. We should get a very, very straight line here once he's settled down a little bit.